goes on in a way that transcends the narrow scope of expectations that the conventional film industry practice expects of them, so that a producer has a very specific job, never even has to be on set. And obviously, you know, an assistant director has a very specific job, everybody has a very specific job. Well, um, everybody who works with James has a, num a number of these roles, and maybe we'll talk about that later as well. But in many ways what happens is then that everyone is called upon to do more. They are more of themselves than they normally would be. Wouldn't you like want to work with someone like that? You know? And so I just felt like that was kind of an important piece because I didn't see that written anywhere. And so there's there's uh, people here, you know, we would really kind of want to talk about certainly Christina uh, uh, Moros' cinematography has a very specific style and James works with this in a way that's indistinguishable. You know, and Vince Jolivet's uh, sort of approach to things is also very much in here. And so, um, you know, quite clearly there's a number of people whose work and uh, with James has created a kind of aesthetic synergy that he's smiling. But I mean, it is, it is kind of, you know, because I mean, I've tried to trace the lines and you can't do it. So the three pieces, just basically, so we could sort of go into this as we could, what the sort of the why, the how, and, and the maybe the what. The why is the stuff that happens maybe before you ever film sort of the why is like, why this particular subject matter? Why this particular poet? Why these particular questions to take up? Um, maybe the how is how itself is it's realized during, not before, but during, how one actually converts it into a filmic work. What are the cinematic techniques? How does one set these things up? How does one decide that scenes have a specific rhythm, specific space, specific feeling and motive? And maybe the what is quite clearly the, the question that a lot of people might, might, might be sitting and going, well, my only question is what? Um, because, you know, you, you come to expect one certain thing and, and you, you get something else. And so the what is really what is the moment of reception that you sort of take away? Because in large part, so much has already been said in the way that the film industry kind of expects you to be this passive um, recipient of specific kinds of work. And culture is so much more than that. And to his credit, James has opened up these parameters and decided to go with individuals who are complex and vital. So those three things. So maybe perhaps opening up with questions about the why. Why Hart Crane? Why not T.S. Eliot? Not that Tom and Viv, for example, you know, uh, a, a previous movie about T.S. Eliot couldn't have been done, uh, was done. But why pick this particular individual who was surely going to be very difficult to uh, portray. All right. <laughs> thank you, Francis. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, um, I guess the, the answer to that, uh, the initial impulse is pretty, was, is pretty simple. I, I um, and it's kind of how it works with uh, most projects that I do, um, I'm kind of struck by something, something that I read or uh, a, an idea uh, will come to me uh, from a, something uh, I, I hear about. But usually uh, it's something I read. I'm, I'm, I'm um, very, um, I read a lot. I'm getting a degree in literature and I, I so I do it, I read a lot and, and that's kind of become, um, for me, primary material. You know, there's, um, Normally, you know, I guess uh, maybe Auden talked about how, you know, there's uh, two levels of, of material, primary and secondary, and, and the idea that, like, the primary material is maybe when you go out in the street and that's the real world and, you you know, you can be hit by cars and, and, and die out there and that's the, that's the primary world. And there's the secondary world of, of art and literature. Um, for me, I, I am, I find that I'm very inspired by um, literature and, and, and poetry, for me, that becomes almost like primary material, and so basically the experience that I had of finding this is I read it and thought, oh, this, I, not knowing exactly what the final form would be, but oh, this would be, this is speaking to me as a movie, and um, it was the same thing when I read Frank's poem, Herbert White, that we turned into a film. I, I just, you know, there's, just, you come across things and you think, it's 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 not just this could be a movie. It's oh, I want to interact with this. I want to speak to this. I want to um, have a different kind of relationship to this than just um, uh, enjoying it for for what it is. I want to you know help transform this or or give it a second life. And so um, 
I read the biography by Paul Mariani after being directed there by um, an introduction by Harold Bloom to uh, in the collected poems of, of Hart Crane. And um, that was seven years ago. Uh, I hadn't made a movie at that point. I didn't know how to make it. And so I remember doing interviews at that time and people would say, well, who would you want to play? And I'd say, oh, Hart Crane and maybe like, and then um, 